Here is a traumatic reading of Boulevard of Broken Dreams by Green Day. <laughs> I walk a lonely road, the only one that I have ever known. Don't know where it goes, but it's home to me, and I walk alone. My shadow's the only one who walks beside me. My shadow's heart's the only thing that's beating. Boom. But you don't have to walk alone if you involve your friends or your family or your pets, especially dogs. I mean, I've, I've walked cats before when I was a kid growing up in Norway. I actually trained all my cats to walk on a leash. Yes, I did. And so I never walked alone. Oh, sometimes I wish I could have walked alone. Start out with your warm-up pace. Deep breath in through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. Roll out those shoulders. You know the drill by now. Shake out those hands. Today we're going to start a little bit more chipper mode. We don't have to get into full mindfulness right now. We can just do something a little different, a little bit more energy, a little bit higher energy. You can do a little dance. Get down tonight. Get down tonight. I forgot the words. Don't know the words. Because it's not the 80s. I think it was the 70s. I could be wrong. I think I know every word, every 80s song <laughs> ever written. Useless information, but you know, I would win Jeopardy 80s music edition. Make sure you're breathing deep breath in through your nose. And exhale through your mouth. Feel for any tense spots. Warm up. So if you've been doing this consistently, this will be day six. So that means that you've learned how to walk more mindfully and when is the best time of day to walk for you. So today we're going to just pick it up a little bit. We're going to do some intervals through here and we're going to talk about walking with pets or with family or with friends. But you want to make sure that you're breathing. That's the most important thing. And just put a little pep in your step. One of the benefits to walking with someone else or your pet is that it strengthens your bonds. Now, normally I would say that, you know, walking together does provide a dedicated time to talk about your day or what's going to happen or just bonding and conversation. But I do talk to pets, so I think that also applies to pets, not just humans. But when I was walking the kids to school, it was nice because we got to spend that dedicated time together. We were walking. They couldn't really be on their phones as much because we were walking. And we had that time, and it was a consistent time where we could hang out together. Walking with friends, like if we go to that coffee shop like we talked about yesterday, how about you walk with your friend or with your neighbor, and they can share personal stories, and you can bond with your friend or your spouse. With your kids, you could share your plans for the day. You can just hang out or enjoy each other's company. You don't even have to talk to each other. You can just put on music and walk, just being next to somebody and Feeling someone else's energy also does wonders for you. Still staying with a warm-up now. Going to do a little groove, a little dance. Feel a little motion in that step. Go just a little bit faster. And everybody who walks together gets a workout. It could be your cats, your dogs, although it's hard to walk, walk with cats, but I've done it. Um, your kids, your family members, because we all tend to just go home and sit down. Go home and get our computers. Go home and be on our phones. But when we do something together, like walking, it's so great for everybody involved because you get that time together and, and everybody works out. Everybody gets that fresh oxygen that I harp on every single day. Everybody feels refreshed and bonded. And kids really can benefit just to get away from their computers and get away from the TV. And a lot of times, especially bigger dogs, high energy dogs, they need to get out and they need to move. And so you can really get them out there consistently when you make walking a part of your life and their lives. Go just a little bit faster. You're going to continue with your deep breathing. You're going to inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. So you're going to inhale energy and you're going to exhale tension. You're going to inhale energy. You're going to exhale stress. You're going to inhale positive energy and exhale more tension. Hold on to this pace. Now let's put a color onto that breathing. So you can make it 
whatever color that you like. So when you inhale, you're going to see that color coming in through your nose, filling up your lungs, expanding, and that color is going to fill up your whole body with energy. And then as you breathe out, you're going to be sending that energy now, that positive energy out into the world. So watch it go, watch it make positive change in everything it touches. Another deep breath in, see that color just filling your body, filling your lungs, it's going everywhere. You just feel so much more energetic and you're going to exhale it and you're going to exhale, you're going to share it with the whole world, share that positive energy. Roll those shoulders. If you walk in the mornings together, it really helps bond, but also helps get a good, positive, and uplifting start to the day because you can talk about uplifting things. It's it's easy for us to fall into the trap of just complaining about things, but think in advance, like if you're walking with your kids, for example, ask them what's going on today at school? What's going on today at sports? What could you do to move that conversation into a positive way so when they get to school they have a positive mindset and they're ready to take on the day and with pets if you're going to work and leave them all day they get that time with you in the morning and they can play and then they feel happy and they feel good and they got to work out and they got fresh air too and you can just really share the stories and create positivity and you can share moments of joy you can share fun stories you can share things that are difficult to talk about sometimes are really good to do during a walk when you're moving Go a little bit faster. You're going to feel how strong your legs are. You're going to walk with purpose today. Go a little bit brisker. Still breathing. Still rolling those shoulders. And walking with friends, family, pets. Helps create healthy habits for everybody. If you walk with your kids, you are setting good examples. So if you're consistently walking and you're walking with them, they will learn that at an early age. So for them, it seems perfectly normal that everybody should be walking instead of driving their cars everywhere. And again, with your pets, you're creating healthy habits for your pets. All of your pets need exercise. They get bored. That's when they get destructive. Give them something to do. Give them some fun. Stimulate them. They get a change in their environment, especially dogs. They see new things. They have new smells. And you don't always get a super good workout if your dog's stopping to sniff. But you know what? It really will stimulate their minds and just give them an overall better day. And for dogs especially, they can run off steam. And those high-energy dogs, you know who I'm talking about. If you're a fur parent of a high-energy dog, you know they need this. And doing it in the morning can really set their day off on a better path. Roll those shoulders. So walking with your pets also helps keep them at a healthier weight. Everybody needs exercise. We need exercise. They need exercise. But a big problem with pets is that they have a lot of obesity-related issues. So if we can keep their weight down in a healthy way, it's a win-win for everybody, you and your fur baby. And then they need joint health just like we do. They need their joints lubricated. And if it's an older dog, for example, you could just go for a little walk, a slower walk, get them out there, get them moving because they're so happy and it will help lubricate those joints. If you consistently do it, maybe they won't have so many problems as they continue to age. Go faster. Going to pick up that pace. Give it a push now. You want to border on uncomfortable. Pretty much like, yeah, I'm walking now, I'm moving now, I'm exercising now. Also, when you walk, it gives you a chance for social opportunities, interactions. If you're walking your dog, you can meet other pet owners. You can talk, you can stop, take a break, make a new friend, talk about your pets. You can meet your neighbors. You can talk more to your neighbors. You can see neighbors that are two streets over and you can build that sense of community. So getting out there, especially if you live alone, Getting out there and walking when other people are walking really helps build you a network of people that you know. They may not be your besties, but there's people out there that you may want to get to know. You never know how great it would be to have them in your life. Now go faster still. Let's push it here. Of course, the best benefit is it's time together with your pets, with your humans, with the humans, with all of our humans. Everybody needs that time together. And pets especially look forward to the walks. They don't complain as much as kids do. They're like, yes, well, dogs. I mean, cats complain. 
dogs are like, yes, I can't believe it. We're going to walk. We're going to have so much fun because every day is the best day of my life. So if you take them out there and you take them walking, you get that quality time together. When you're not looking at your phone or distracted, they get that one-on-one time with you. Now you're going to slow it down a little bit, not a lot. Here are tips that you can do with your, well, mostly human, mostly human friends and family members. Take a deep breath in first. And exhale. We're going to back off a little bit more pace because we're going to pick it up again in a second. I'm going to give you some ideas for things that you can do to make walks more fun, both for you, your friends, family, and your pets. Now go faster. I want you to push it while I talk about this one segment here. And I want you to be really starting to get uncomfortable now. But your shoulders are going to be down and relaxed. You can create a scavenger hunt, something really easy. You can make a list for your kids. Maybe not your friends unless you scavenger from Starbucks to Starbucks, (laughs) which I could do very easily. You can tell your kids, okay, today we're going to look for five of these items. Like how many white cars do you see? Make a little scavenger hunt. Help them find different things to help them get engaged. And so they want to walk. You want to motivate them to walk. Keep up your pace. You're going to push it a little bit more. Find things that you know are on the route, but they may not know. And have them find them. You'll be surprised at how many bunny rabbit decor things there are, and you haven't noticed them. Well, your kids will find them, and they'll be looking, and they'll be active, and they won't be on their phones, and they won't be complaining because they'll be looking for something. Back it off a little bit now. It can be a special flower. It could be a weird-shaped leaf. They could be looking for a certain bird, if you have different kinds of birds. There's so many things that You could see on the route that you can tell them in advance, and this is what we're going to look for today. This is our scavenger hunt. You can do the same thing with your dog. You could distract them, hide the treat or the toy, and then they can have their own scavenger hunt. Now you're going to go faster again. You're going to push your speed a little bit. As we're going to talk about brief fitness challenges that anybody can do, both humans and animals. You can include short intervals like this one. With jumping jacks, squats, um, your kids can, you know, go up the ladder to a slide and then slide down. You can have them go across the monkey bars. You can set up little challenges for your kids, your friends, you and your spouse. With your dog, you could throw a frisbee. You could throw a ball. So you would have like certain challenges. Okay, so we're going to catch this ball five times. No, not that your dog can count, but it may be. Hold on to your pace. We're almost there. But, you know, you set up little fitness challenges so they get a little interval workout, too. And it's actually really fun. You could do push-ups on a park bench. You could do dips. There's a lot of things that you can do. Create those little fitness challenges. Now we're going to slow it down. You can also do storytelling walks. So everybody can take a turn creating a continuous story. You've seen this before, probably. You might have done it. I've never done it. But it seems like it would be so much fun. Where, like, you start... And then each family member or your friends continue the sentence. So you can start with once upon a time, and then they grab the story from there, and then someone else grabs the story, and someone else grabs the story. And you can also incorporate things that you are seeing in your environment, and you can make a story out of it. You create an environment that makes you look forward to your walks. Now we're going to hold on to the slower pace. Pet-friendly parks are great. You know, they even have trails that are pet-friendly. You can go to a dog park. Just let them, let the dogs, not the kids, although the kids could do it too, but let the dogs smell the new scents and the sights and just have some fun. Everybody gets to get out. Everybody gets to get exercise. Everybody gets to walk. And it gets us away from our electronics, from our TVs, from our sofas. And let's just do something good for ourselves that can also be really fun. Take another deep breath in. And exhale. Hold on to this pace. Just kind of winding it down a little bit. The best way to incorporate this for your family, friends, and pets is to set a consistent time. So find a time that works for everybody because that's how you're going to stick with it. Is it in the mornings? Is it in the afternoons? Is it in the evenings? You know, what works best for everybody? You want to try to 
encourage people to make it as much as they can. Maybe you walk to school, or maybe after you drop the kids off at school, you go for a walk with your friend, or maybe in the evening you walk with your significant other, or you walk with your dog, or you can still walk with a friend in the evening. It's nice to get that wind down time together. Take a deep breath in now through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. Make it fun. Make it enjoyable. Tailor it to their interests. Because you're not going to do things you don't want to do in the long run. None of us are. And then rotate the responsibility. You can each take turns deciding where are we going to go? What are we going to do? And come up with ideas and come up with activities. Everybody has a turn at doing that. And then everybody has that buy-in, that skin in the game. Another deep breath in, you're going to slow it down just a little bit more. I forgot if I mentioned about the hashtag. So when you're out doing these fun activities with your family, pets, or friends, take a picture, take a video of your environment, the birds, the water, your shoes, your dog. Walk and talk with Helen is the hashtag. That way we can keep each other accountable. I would love if you would share this challenge with your family and friends. They can jump in any time. The challenge is completely free. There's no advertising. I'm just doing this to help you and myself get motivated to get out there again. But if you want to donate to the challenge, I have a donation account at Kofi. It's ko-fi.com slash walk and talk. Slow it down a little more and take a deep, deep, deep breath in. Tell yourself how much you enjoyed the walk today and be proud of yourself. I know for some people, you're like, oh, I only went walking. I didn't spend four hours at the gym. But getting out there and doing something is more than most people are doing. You're doing more than most people. And I will see you tomorrow.